let's talk about hormone replacement therapy. So uh, that's generally the first step that many people take in their medical transition, and oftentimes they do this before any uh, gender marker or name change. Um, so we'll start at the beginning. Um, this is something that if you're watching this video, um, I'm assuming that you've put some research into, you kind of know the effects. Uh, this is not focused on that, this is focused on the nitty gritty of how you make it happen. So, um, starting right off, some of the health clinics that you can check out are Chase Brexton Healthcare in Baltimore, um, Johns Hopkins Center for Transgender Health in Baltimore as well, and Whitman Walker in DC. Um, using one of these LGBTQ plus focused healthcare providers can be wonderful. Um, it'll give you really informed doctors and staff. Um, they also have various other programs and resources that they can make available to you. And they have, um, you know, different doctors, not just your endocrinologists, but also general doctors, therapists, um, depending on the institution, of course. Um, but it's nice to have a center kind of um, medical team. Another option is to see a general endocrinologist who specifies that they treat um, transgender clients and will provide uh, HRT. So um, this is something that you can find out um, through your insurance website. So if you have insurance, um, go onto that website, log in, and there will be a portal where you can search for um, different kind of doctors, so if you search for endocrinologists, go through the list, see who's near you, check up on them, see if they mention anything about transgender people in their websites, um, and of course you can always call and ask. Um, some suggestions for uh, general endocrinologists that do this um, HRT would be um, Nocacy Health Partners in Frederick and Washington Endocrinology in Gaithersburg. Um, so again, you'll just make sure that you uh, call these doctors and um, communicate with them, see kind of what their requirements are. Um, one of the very common requirements, and this is true of general endocrinologists as well as the, uh, the bigger name healthcare centers that I've mentioned, would be um, that they would like you to provide a, a letter from a therapist basically saying that um, it is healthy and safe for you to start um, hormone therapy at this time, um, and that they would recommend that you go ahead with it. Um, in terms of, of legality, this is something that is not uh, required by law, but it is kind of the general best practices, at least in this community in Maryland. Um, so be prepared that you will probably have to go see a therapist. Um, one of the pluses of picking one of the bigger uh, centers for healthcare um, is that a lot of them offer therapy or they know who to refer you to. Um, so that can be super helpful. Even if you don't want to go to those centers, it, that might be the, your best option for getting started on therapy. Um, it's possible that you'll find some endocrinologists that don't require you to do the therapy and um, it's well and good. Um, the only thing to consider there is if you're planning on having any kind of surgery in the future, um, your uh, surgeons are going to want to see a medical readiness letter, also from a therapist or a licensed clinical social worker. Um, so it's, it's good if you have the opportunity now to establish that relationship with a the therapist, um, you can get your HRT letter, get your surgery letters down the line, and hopefully get some good therapy out of it. When you call centers that you would like to make an appointment for, just ask them to walk you through it, ask them, um, you know, what are the documents you'd like me to bring, um, do you cover my kind of insurance, and, and um, yeah, just any general questions that you have, please, um, please ask your healthcare providers before you go in, and that will save you a lot of wasted time. If you find out that they don't take your insurance, move on to the next one. Uh, if they find out, if you find out that they require you to, you know, do anything that is, uh, seems wrong to you, then you should trust your gut and try to move on to a different uh, healthcare provider that you're going to feel more comfortable with because this is a process that you're going to want to communicate with this 
healthcare provider a lot, probably every three months for the first year or so, and then still you're going to be seeing that person for a long time. So you're going to want to make sure that this healthcare provider is the right choice for you. Um, so please check out our website in the description. That's going to have some links to some of the um, uh, providers that I've mentioned here. And um, if you just uh, want to peruse their websites and see if their locations and offerings are good for you, then please check that out.